live on YouTube and then God oh, TikTok's messed up again. Okay, that's everything. Hello, I'm Jeff Nathan. Welcome back to the fastest and most delicious hour of wild game on the internet. Live and unscripted. This is Hunt Chef Live. Um, we are in is this season four or forty-nine or I think maybe five. Somewhere in that ballpark. But hey, spring has finally sprung here in the uh, lower highlands of uh, southwestern Pennsylvania, where we uh, uh, happily reside. And spring here means a lot of different stuff. Now, our turkey season, for whatever reason, is open way late, not till the official season opener is May 4th. Um, I think West Virginia and Ohio are both a, a week earlier than us. Our youth season always kind of coincides. Anyhow, but springtime here means ranch. So if you're not from this area uh, or haven't come across them before, ranch are a wild kind of strong garlicky. Yeah, I watch this thing good. I still got to jump on strong garlicky sort of wild onion. Um, mostly two or three, sometimes four or five, uh, big, beautiful, lavender green leaves. And when you walk into a big ranch pad to the bottom or on a ridge side, it's just like, like the most coolest neon greenest out there. And they have these little bulbs, uh, so they're all washed up. And although trout season opens up here for us, tonight we're cooking walleye, and specifically walleye wings. So these guys, um, lots of meat on them, and they are from that throat patch right behind, below the gills, right here. And we're gonna walk you through those and talk to you about them. And of course, we cook them up and make them delicious. But without further ado, all things Hunt Chef Live, but we're here to set or anywhere in Hunt Chef Nation going live, it's all brought to you all by our one and only title sponsor, 84 Lumber Company, Building the American Dream since 1956. If you've got a project, if you're a contractor looking to get into business or uh, need uh, a better supplier, you need to check out 84 Lumber. Been with us the whole way through. And um, that leads us up to our official beer of Hunt Chef Live, uh, which just happens to be none other than Spree Shop Brewing. And if you uh, hadn't noticed, there are three red cans and one purple can. The purple one's for me. I'm the IPA guy, and I love that Who's Your Daddy IPA. Straight out of Cousin, West by God, Virginia. Uh, the Johnson family, Street Shop Brewing. You guys ready to do a cold beer crack or what? We're getting some, we're getting some nods. Come on, come on. We're going to get in here, we're going to get the crack gone, and then we're going to start cooking. Everybody's very tense. Uh, All right, here we go. Cold beer crack on three, two, one. Nice. Cheers. Cheers to you all out there at Hunt Chef Nation. Free shop room. It's like mother's milk. Only for adults. Okay, so we talked about the wild wings and ranch. We're going to do a couple different recipes there. And walking through a ribby, some of the wings blackened, some of them um, shredded up with some uh, cracker crumbs. Of course, lots and lots of flavor going down. But the other thing we're going to talk to you about tonight, you know, I've made a lot of videos, a, a lot of how to's on how to make venison bacon, which is brown deer meat, using the Hunt Chef Country Style Brian Kit. Those are all on the YouTube channel. Go there anytime, check them out, get teed up. We've got stuff in the freezer. You want to make it with, you want to be ready to go for a coming season, but the Brian Kit does that. But it does so much more. And one of the things it does is actually makes great pork bacon. So these are split fresh bellies. And what we're going to do tonight, kind of in between getting the other stuff ready, is we're going to mix up the brine. We're going to do a little bit of hand tenderizing uh, on the bellies. And, and that hand tenderizing is also going to help with that brine inside those belts faster and uh, uh, raise up the cure time, the brine time on them. And then we'll do another video, probably the cell phone live through the week, um, where we're gonna smoke these guys. We actually might take a couple of slices of fresh pork belly and just cook it up in a skillet with some uh, bone down and dirty. It's gonna be delicious and we can. So, and one more 
fourth thing to mention here, um, pickled ranch. So these are some big balls that are in here. These are a year old, and these can go to my great friend, uh, Cow Pie, a.k.a. Ben Gardner, if you're out there. Love the brother, thank you. Um, but we're going to use some of this vinegar to pickling brine in a sauce we're going to make out of the greens, and we're probably just going to snack on some of those pickled balls. But the bigger the balls, I think, the better the pickle um, for ranch. In the meantime, I made notes. Hold on. So in our cracker crust we're going to make tonight, we're going to do a couple of different things. The gnats are back. It's 75 degrees outside. I'm going to kill it before this is over. I'm not going to eat it, but I am going to kill it. Uh, but what we want to do is we've got um, some Ritz crackers, and we're going to take some Hunt Chef Real Dan Deal. So any of my Pennsylvania folks out there um, that are kicking it in that are kicking it trout fishing right now. Um, real damn deal. It will treat you right every single time. Um, we're going to load up the crackers and some of our just all purpose flour with some real damn deal uh, to be able to season the walleye when you look. So, the reason I have it in the bag is we're going to smash them up and we don't make a big mess. Uh, so, we'll get to that here in just a second. But you can do it with my hand, or you can take the, uh, that brine put out of the way. Put a little hot, wet ranch hot sauce back. Just stay tuned for that. Or you can get yourself that Hunt Chef Cadillac cleaner, and it's just so much more satisfying even if you bust them up with your hand. But we're going to make it pretty fine, uh, because I don't care if there's big chunks of it, especially on a smaller piece like the wings or the bigger blade. We're going to put that cracker crust on the top, drizzle with some butter, then be a story, you might need bigger chunks in there. Um, but this is going to be the spot right, right there already. So we're just going to shake it up, mix that real damn deal with the crust. How's everybody doing out there in Hunchy Have Nation? Is there any comments? Is there any chatting in? Nobody's on there. Hi, and how's it doing? And all the love. I hope everybody is having a great week. I hope you're having some great weather like we had today. Um, we have been uh, almost underwater, like a lot of you folks out there in the rest of the country, I'm sure. But the the Mother Nature sunshiny weather showed up for us today. So there we go. Pretty well busted up. Thoroughly seasoned with that Hunt Chef real damn deal. We're going to save that bag, just like my grandma would. So from here, um, I want to talk to you guys while we kind of progress through our recipe here. Um, we've got four eggs, we're going to crack those here in a minute to start to. But we have begun making all the official announcements for the first ever, one only one of its kind in southwest Pennsylvania in the kind of four state close region there. Uh, for the Hunt Chef Deer, Gear, and Beer Expo. Uh, that's going to be at the Fayette County Pennsylvania Fairgrounds, the third weekend in September, and that's the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. And we plan on using all the great stuff we've learned in the last three years of going to hundreds of outdoor shows all over the country, but mostly when it's cold out. And we wanted to put one on that was much closer to hunting season and that was really focused on kids and families and training folks together through and via the outdoors. Now, we plan on having lots of vendors, hundreds of vendors, um, hunting, fishing, camping, boating, you name it, um, all of our sponsorship opportunities are going to be published here before the end of the week. So we'd love to have it. If you're interested in supporting a great cause, uh, a great event, and getting yourself and your company in front of um, a whole lot of folks, we'd love to have you uh, chime in in uh, Sarah's house. Here they are. Right there, right close. Uh, chime in, and uh, you can email us at huntchef, or info at huntchef.com is the official email uh, for the site. If you go to huntchef.com, the, uh, the roadmap layout uh, is 
getting more and more detailed each week. So we're going to have kids scavenger hunts, trout ponds. We're looking at um, car trucks, jeep shows, and again, all the vendors. We're going to have a, a ladies' lounge. Uh, I'm told there might be wine there, some cosmetics, some clothing, some lots of ladies' stuff. So stay tuned. Lots more coming there. And just to be a vendor to set up, you know, 10 by 10, 10 by 20 space, um, all that info, if not, by the end of the week, We'll be out next week, so stay tuned. And of course, ticketing information uh, will be coming along for that as well. Oh, I talk so much when I do these things. So, we've got our crackers, our, our eggs, and our flour ready to rock and roll. Um, we've got the butter, we're going to make uh, the two different sauces out of one with the bowl with the hot sauce, one with the greens uh, with the party flour, and some of the triple grand vinegar from our buddy top five. Six wild flavor seasonings. You know, we're all about building layers of flavor, and that's where we're going tonight. And we'll get to frying the pork bellies towards the end. So, first up, the walleye wings. Now, I held one of these up earlier, and again, I'll show you if you uh, just link it in. But lots of meat, and these come from right here, right at the base of the jaw, that, that, that kind of pinch point between the two gill plates, right over there. And you can get these off almost all your fish. Walleye, I mean, just look at the meat on this guy. So, I, I did take uh, the back of the knife and kind of knocked off it. So, a little bit of scale there, knock those off. And what we're going to do now is take half of these, the half we're going to blacken. We're going to lay them out on the tray. Bless you. Thank you. Give me a little sneeze over there. So lay them out on the tray. And get some of that hunt chef straight out of pump tree. That's about half. Uh, load it up on right here. Ah, I grabbed the right one this time. So, straight out of pump tree is our Cajun and black and seasoning. It's the spiciest of the delicious dozen. Um, it is, you know, I, I was a big fan of black and foods when I learned about it for a long time. And then, more than just the technique, the flavor stayed with me. And all these years later, that's where my straight out of foster train, Cajun and blackening seasoning comes from. Um, if we're all about the blackening technique, even though we really can't do it in here, uh, so the smoke is going out. Um, we can't do it in here in a, uh, a very traditional uh, format. But what we can do is have the heat down just enough where we get a great sear and great caramelization with the seasoning and the protein. We got the cast iron preheating already. Now we're gonna load it up the other side. And the skin, especially once you get the little bit of uh, scales off there, it's super easy to do. You can even do it before you cut them out. Um, it just cooks up so nice. So we're pre-seasoned, getting ready to rock and roll on our blackened walleye wings. And now for our the ones we're going to deep fry. So we've got that uh, seasoned flour loaded up with the Hunt Chef real damn. Third time to charm. That Hunt Chef real damn deal. Uh, we're going to get them in the flour and let that crust initially start to kind of set up so we have a good base for our eggs to stick to to be able to fry uh, on. These guys, we're pan frying. Uh, you can use fry daddy, uh, some kind of countertop deep fryer. You can use a pot of oil like I often do here on the Hunt Chef Live. But we're just going to use um, a mix of butter and oil, kind of on medium heat. And especially because we've got these Ritz cracker crumbs with the Hunt Chef Real Dan Dillon. Um, we're not looking for that traditional. 350 degree deep fry temperature. We're a little bit lower than that because the, the cracker will, in my opinion, kind of burn and start to fall off. So we're going to see if we can get it done and still it with a little bit lower heat, make a little more room here. So now we let that crust, that flour crust, start to set up. Put these guys out for you here, out here for you to see them. Put the crackers, the eggs, again, that butter. And we're going to make just a little bit of room 
So you can see what I'm working with on these ramps. So, again, all washed up, root, root balls off, um, wiped off, big, beautiful leafy green that smell just and taste, smell and taste just like the bulbs do. So, what I want to do is we're going to take the Hunt Chef Battle Axe. So you can go and get yourself one of these at huntchef.com. Um, I think we had four to order already today, so that was awesome. But you can start and stop wherever you want on the ball. I'm going to get most of the uh, that red, that deep kind of light, deep sort of cherry color. Uh, it's coming off with all the white balls. We're going to keep stacking those greens up. And you're not going to want to miss what we do with the sauce for those. But there's a lot of different things you can do with ramp greens. You can dehydrate them, make them into a powder, uh, mix them with sea salt, make a ramp salt. There are a lot of different ways. I like to just chop them and back, saute them and vacuum seal them. And they're great to add to a dish anytime throughout the rest of the year. Uh, people have canned them. Uh, obviously pickle the bulbs, but those greens, a lot of folks just discard them, and I think that is a big mistake um, if you do so. Hey, I think we missed a little moment there. We have an opportunity to do a little giving stuff away. Hey, hey, on the Hunt Chef Live show. There it is. There's the, 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 the police lights, because that means we're so excited. It's time for roll call. The first one of the evening, folks. Chime in the comments below where you're watching from. City, town, state, province, or country for your chance to win. One of, how many are we doing tonight? Eight again? Sure. Eight $10 Hunt Chef gift cards. Go to all the wild flavors at HuntChef.com. And, um, you know, we'd love to hear and see where you're watching from. <coughs> and all that talking, it's time for a little sip of screech out. Okay, so we've got our bulbs and we've got some more of that stem. That's great and perfect for what we're looking to do. I dropped one on the floor. Um, we've got a small saucepan that we're going to work into here. And what I want to do first is kind of the building block of the sauce. We're just going to take a nice mouth of butter, right off the bat, put it in there, and we're going to turn the heat on low to start. There we go. Crank it back down. Now, I'm going to chop these kind of randomly. You can make them as fine or as coarse as you like. But if you've got a hunch of that box, you just grab them around. They really don't matter. Um, but working through, you can leave them in the chunks if you want to get that bite of the ramp. But if you want to have it more uh, married into the sauce, then you're going to want to go ahead and chop them up a little bit more. So tonight, we go for a little bit of a medium uh, chop on these guys. And get them in that butter. And let them start to just kind of melt slow. Um, not even necessarily caramelizing, although if we do, that will add just another deeper roast to your note to um, our to our ramp hot sauce, which is going to go just fine with our walleye wings. So, once we get these guys started, we're going to chop up the greens and get them both on the stove and fire up. Make some delicious, fresh Western Southwest Pennsylvania ranch sauces for this awesome PA walleye. Um, but you guys can transfer this. If you just wanted to use garlic and onions, um, would be a great mix. Green onions and maybe some, some younger garlic uh, would be a good replacement for ranch. But hey, dance with what you got. All right, so the ranch balls chopped up, going into our butter, in the saucepan. Getting ready to start the hot sauce. There we go. Now we got all these amazing, vibrant, bright, beautiful greens. And we're only going to need about half. So I'm going to take, we're going to use just the top half. These guys we're going to save and probably saute and blanch uh, for another recipe and or hang on to. 
know we're just going to go back through and just kind of toss them in the water. Same way. Ooh, the greens keep the butter down. So you have 
a question from a viewer. Are leaks the same thing as ramps? Are leaks the same thing as ramps? So there are, I come to find, there are a lot of folks that call ramps wild leaks. And so to answer to the, if it's that question, mostly I think yes. If they're the, the big kind of cylindrical long uh, green stem leaks that would be kind of, you know, formed, um, not picked in the wild, then no. And I'll tell you, the biggest difference is the wild, the, the, the wild ramps, again, what some folks call wild leaks, um, and you know, nobody's wrong, it's a middle of model, whatever. We're all just eating here. Um, the wild ones have that garlic, that sharp undertone to them that, you know, domestically farmed leaks do not. So is that a, is that, does that bring up more questions or is that a good answer? No, I actually Googled it as you were talking and they said the exact same thing. They're wild leaks, but they're not leaks. Well. They're referred to as wild leaks. They yeah. So I mean, Google calls me when they want to know stuff. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. I call you Julius. Call me what? Just don't call me late for dinner. Whatever you do. All right. I can't tell you how cool these look. I hope you guys get a nice shot up there. Just those cracker crumb crusted uh, walleye wings. We're gonna get our bowls out of the way. <laughs> We, the, the sink doesn't have any water to it. It's no drain on it, but it's a nice place to put very fish. So we're doing that. I'm told Lance is working on it. I don't know. All right, a little bit of cleanup here. Now we're going to inspect our sauces again. Green bulbs. Okay. So what I want to do, I want to do this. We're going to kill the heat under both of them right now. We're going to come back to it once, so once we get started on our uh, cooking our wings. We'll get the heat just right under that skillet there, that saute pan. We've already got the cast iron preheated, and I'm going to clean up a little more instead of a threading mess. And a little shout out to uh, Street Chop Brewing. Who's your daddy IPA? Mm. Some dino. If any long time uh, Punch Up Live watchers are appreciating all the initial camera angles. We got some stuff going on here. We're, we're one, two, three. Is it four, Matt? It's four. Is there one behind me? <laughs> and we got a big old microphone up here. I hope speaking enough uh, to pick it up. All right, so uh, a little bit of oil left in the old uh, George Dickel jug here, and we're going to put that in our cast iron. That's going to kind of be our base frying medium. Wow, let's get all put that. Our base frying medium for the uh, uh, cracker crusted walleye wings. And then we're going to kind of tone in a little bit more butter. Actually, I'm keeping that so I can keep track. We've got some butter right here. It's already softened. And we're going to let that kind of melt out a little bit more. This cracker crumb is going to suck it up. A little bit more and a little bit more heat under it. Cool. Where the sizzle. There's flavor. Ah, oh, that's coming in. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to let that butter melt into that vegetable oil, and that's going to be where we're getting the crispy walleye made from, right out of cast iron. Now, you'd have thought maybe that I would have done a blackening in the cast iron, but I wanted that kind of steady heat for the kind of pan frying action on it. Um, no, no issues there, but kind of going against tradition, I guess, a little bit. And then a little bit more butter. Holy oh, macaroni! Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the second roll call of the evening. Time to call this blow where you're watching from. City, town, state, province, or country for your chance to win one of tonight's eight $10 F50 gift cards. Good to all the wild flavors. 
headhuntdev.com. All right, we're going to be doubling down on sort of kind of faux blackening and uh, hand frying. Well, not hand frying, it's just a little harder to learn it. I think that's going to be the ticket right there. We're going to start in with our blackened wings. And so there's a, there's a flesh side and a skin side. So I want to do the skin side first. Because I want that skin to get a little bit of crispness to it. A little more meat. It'll come around. We're not in a big, big fuss or hurry for that. Oh, I don't know if they're all going to fit. Well, it's starting to sizzle. Matt, when it's sizzle, there's what? Flavor, chef. Guys, <laughs> quick study, let me tell you. All right, so now, letting those guys do their thing. Inside down, starting out low, medium heat, just let it kind of hang out. So you can hear all the popping and bubbling and wanting to get delicious noises going on up here in that cast iron. Can I just ask you, how pretty is that? It's like it's like that came off the food factory assembly line kind of thing, but same deal, skin side down. And we're going to do these probably in a couple of batches because what I don't want to do is overload that fast. And I don't want to get the meat, uh, the skin or the meat. Well, let me put them in here. All right, we're going to find a way to put them on. Um, hopefully, we're going to spin this guy around and get, get him spin to spin back here. There we go. Okay. Now we get all, where are we going to be? Six in here, seven in here. And you see that low, slow kind of bubble? You might be like, oh my gosh, it's going to be so greasy. And just bear with me, bear with me. Trust me, people. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. All right, more dirty dishes. It's like I have a whole counter here now. Holy macaroni. You love the terracombs. I love the terracombs. Do you have one in your pocket? Not in my pocket. Emily always gets to get up and take like, I don't know, three different uh, experience breaks on every broadcast and stuff that I forgot. You can see those black and white, I don't know if you're up there where you're at, but they're already becoming very effervescent, um, or hand fried, shallow fried, with that rich crack and crust with the hunt chef real damn deal in it, um, rocking out. Speaking of rocking out, thank you so much. Okay, while we're cooking here, and we kind of explain most of what we have going on, really straightforward stuff, we've got some more stuff to talk about. So I'd love to hear from anybody out there tonight that is, um, that A, already cooked walleye wings, and, what, and how you do it. Two, if you pick and harvest and preserve or cook or eat ranch, and how you do it. And then it's mushroom season. Shed season is kind of still on a lot of the south, southern parts of the country. Turkey season is rocking. Um, I'm so jealous. I, I really had hoped at one point that this was going to be the year that I get down to Florida to um, get after one of their birds, or maybe even to Texas. But alas, I'm going to be up here working and waiting uh, for PA, West Virginia, Ohio to open once again. So I'd love to hear how that's going, but if you got some, uh, get that from above map. Yep. Golden brown on its way. Mm. And that's one of the great things about that kind of 50-50 butter and oil sort of mix. We're going to kill the heat back a little bit more in the black wing. So now, our soft pan, throw back on the heat, but low, 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 low. All right, so we're going to keep an eye up here. This pan is going to be flipped first. For the hot sauce, we've got the ranch in there. And I want to put, I'm going to read my note. Oh, yeah, that's right. So we're going to go in with some Tabasco. We're not going to lay it up too much. I just want to kind of accent it a little bit. You can use Frank's or go to the favorite hot sauce, do what you do. But we're going to back it up flavor-wise with some Hunt Chef straight out of the bake. Now, 
we make your way lots of stretch and buffalo sauce. Um, I know it might seem maybe sort of odd, but my straight out of bake and kind of hot sauce buffalo flavor, Max made in heaven. Alright, flipping our black wings. And because these are meaty wings, once we flip them, we're going to leave the heat on for just about 30, 45 more seconds. And we're going to kill it so that don't want to overcook that precious, delicious. Look at the color on these things. Oh my gosh. We're right there. Not a ton of oil or, or butter or, or whatever else, but not the straight dry pan heat. And we're going to start here. Golden brown. Golden brown. I mean, come on, people. It's so easy. What we're not going to do is cut the heat on, on, the, on the pan fry pan, the pan fry, because when you cut the heat on that oil, that's when it starts to kind of like uh, uh, get soggy and the grease, the oil, butter, sort of sticking to the meat. So it takes a couple more minutes here. But we are killing that heat in that pan right now. So Tabasco in with these guys. <clears throat> Straight out of the bay in there with the red bowl. Heat off. And now we're going to go with one, two, three, three nice slices of butter. And we're going to kind of mount and melt that butter into the grant bowl, into straight out of the bay, into that Tabasco. Oh, I'm getting some Tabasco in the nose already. I love it. So you can do hotter, uh, milder, use the hot sauce if you like. Once you get to turn the heat off, that's when you want to be melting that butter in. So you get to wait for the heat all together. And right over here on the table, checking my clock. It's 8.09 8 or 8. Alright, we've got a good emulsification. We're probably not going to stay that way, but it looks great right now. And black and wings coming out. Kind of a great condition. And right behind them, we're going to try with the try guys. Look at the blackened walleye wings. You want to talk about a great pairing for some awesome street shop beer? This is going to be it. Right here. Oh my. I wish you guys could smell this stuff. Holy oh, smokes. Wow. Alright. Can you hear the sizzle, the dizzle right there? A little bit different here is we're going to have. Oh, two points I made it. Um, take the pound. These guys come out. Give them a little shake. Heat off up front. We'll come back to these greens and that sauce here in just a second. But I don't want to overcook these guys. Oh no, I lost the wing. What are you green? Alright, smell the time. Is it funny? Maybe a little bit funny. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. I got an okay. I got like a golf clap out of it. Anyhow, we'll take what we get here. But, I mean, just look at that golden brown deliciousness that uh, we're going to be partaking in in just a short amount of time. Mmm. Not a bad cleanup. Let it cool. Dump it in a can. Wipe it out with a paper towel. You're done. Oh, they're getting to the sink. Alright, so wings two ways, right out there. The hot sauce. Now, for this guy, off the heat, and I said earlier, we we're going to use some of the vinegar from my buddy Cow Pie's pickle green from last year. <laughs> it's like a fine wine, getting better with time. Alright, so there's that vinegar going in. So instead of heat, we're going to tang, but more sharpness. <laughs> and we want to, I'm going to do some party file on this. Let me check my notes here. 
Macquarie file, vinegar. What does that say? Oh, it's a smoky binder. I can't read my writing. All right, plenty of party file. And if you haven't tried my hot shot party file before, it's like I took those hard little bleeding cubes that you have in the cupboard, deconstructed them, put them back together with less salt and less bitter and a lot more flavor. So anything with wings, uh, anything savory, especially sauces, gravies, beans, uh, all your sides, potatoes, rice noodles. I actually got a, a direct message yesterday someone made butter rice and party pop for the first time, and they were doing backflips. So like, everybody wants more of my rice now. So it's that easy, people. Just like that. And then that smoky. Ah! I don't know. No. That's because I decided to use feather duster instead of <coughs> bite. Greatest seasoned salt for them, people. Feather duster. Just like that. <laughs> it was a last minute change. Okay. So now we're going to go in with about the same amount of butter, just a very different style of sauce. Um, use the greens, not the bulbs. No hot sauce, per se. And what we're going to do is bring it over here and with that same fork start to work and melt that butter. It's better to have kind of colder the room temperature butter whenever you're doing uh, mounting in the sauces like this because it melts a lot slower and doesn't just the butter doesn't separate in the oil and fat and protein and kind of look greasy. So if you can see that already, it's like gonna be some kind of awesome because we're gonna take this a step further here in just a second. Um, with our hand immersion blender. We've got those ranch greens, butter, pickled ranch brine, lots of vinegar, um, party file, and some of my feather dust and season salt. Now, we're going to blend this kind of smooth. So what that's going to do is going to make our greens into almost more of a, like a pureed kind of pesto situation. Let's see if Lance says this right. I got no juice. Oh, I got juice. Never mind. I just gotta learn how to use the blender. Do I have to hold that down? Oh, there we go. Nothing like a little bit of ramp around in the eyeball there. Oh, oh, oh. That's looking good. Stretch. This time for that last one. 
Coming into the home stretch, we want to get our brine. I want to talk you guys through uh, using the brine and getting these pork bellies situated. So, I'm going to go right there. And so, every hot chef tonight, if we get a wet brine, we're going to soak. You want two and a half gallons of water. Okay, and that's what we've got it here. And it's probably going to be just the right amount for six. So these are six pork belly halves, fresh bacon, basically. Um, I was going to cook some with some lowdown. We might have to do that, but... Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the last roll call of the evening. Shout out to you all that's below. Where are you watching from? Saving town, state, province, or country for your chance to win tonight. One of eight. $10 Hunt Chef e gift cards. Go to all the wild flavors at huntchef.com. So, I highly encourage you to do that. I, I got a couple, couple, couple little slices. A couple little slices while well, I'm working on the, on the how the brine. So, low, medium heat. And we're going to get our fat lax out. You get these huntchef.com. $119. Bucks. That gets you free shipping. Anything over $99 on the website. $99 one penny, free shipping. But the Hunt Chef Battle Axe, I mean, it's, it's that easy. This bag makes me look stupid. There we go. Anyhow, but the uh, end of brine kit, of course, not our cut, so we'll tear apart. Okay, Battle Axe going in. There we go. And then inside each brine kit, Three pouches. And this is where, you know, I can't tell you how many outdoor shows that we go to. So, what you see through the window in the bright kit is that great big seasoning pouch. But what's behind it is the sodium reprobate and the tripolyphosphate. So, pretty much most, not all, most of your um, lunch meats out there, these are two preferred that are in all of them. And they do a fantastic job. Um, everything in moderation, but what we're going to do is this kit into two and a half gallons of our brine, our, our two and a half gallons of water to make our brine, um, is what we're working with here tonight. And, you know, I created these guys to make hams out of deer hind legs, and they do an amazing job. There's tons of, I can't tell you. How many folks have messaged us, told us that, uh, you know, deer hams are some of the best things they've ever had off the wild garden of venison. They were great for your ducks, great for, hey, turkey season, great for your wild turkeys. Uh, but all three packets in there, and stir them up. And if you haven't headed over and hit that subscribe button on the Hunt Chef YouTube channel yet, you need to because there are already plenty of how-tos and full recipe videos. Um, doing uh, smoked walleye in the brine kit, deer hams, bear hams, coyote legs, all kind of good stuff. Um, just head over to Hunch Up YouTube, all in order. Hit that subscribe, hit that subscribe button and uh, let the good time and the wild flavor roll. What else are we going to talk about? We talked about the battle axes, we talked about ramps, we talked about mushrooms, we talked about Free Child Brewing, the official beer of Hot Chef Live. We talked about 84 Lumber Company, the title sponsor of all things Hot Chef Live. And what we didn't, and we, we kind of touched on, I touched on Deer, 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 yeah. So back to Deer, 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 our first one of a kind. Especially in this area, Laurel Highland, Southwest Pennsylvania, Northern West Virginia, Eastern Ohio, Western Maryland, and you all come on from Arizona, Montana, Connecticut, uh, wherever you're at, Jersey, get on over here. It's going to be a great show. Um, but more info coming out on all those. Tomorrow night, 7 30 Eastern, the one and only Not to Pop Out Boards, our partnership show, All Known Sportsman Channel, Season 4 Aaron. Check out what Jay and Woods are knocking down. This is old buddy Hunt Chef cooking up in the kitchen. 
Well, there's there's that, right? Um, that was it's on the list. So our great friends at uh, Chico Outdoors, it's a 501c3 charity. Um, great folks. You know, anytime you got a, a charity involved, folks are, are, are giving up their time, putting in late um, evenings for meetings, etc. But Chico Outdoors, is this the third or fourth annual, I think? This is six. Six. Who knows? I'm flying. Um, and they are a great friend of ours, but you'll be able to see us there all this weekend. And yours truly, I'll be doing um, the Hunt Chef one day of your breakdown, both Saturday and Sunday, and then the cooking a venison recipe both days after the one man deer breakdown. We're going to have the Hunt Chef meat wagon there. We're actually going to have walleye on the wagon. You can get a blackened or beer battered, uh, not cracker for the but beer battered. And uh, we're going to have a whole lot of flavor there. all the seasoning, sausage kit, jerky kit, fry kit, um, battle axes. Come see us, Chief Outdoor Show, at the Westmoreland County Fairgrounds, Saturday and Sunday. That's April 13th, 14th, I think. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hold the phone, kids. We have a big announcement. I'm not going to throw it out here, but one of the most exciting things, Chandler's been working on it nonstop that we're going to be having happen is we're going to be releasing our Hunt Chef Seasoning Fundraiser Program. So fall teams, VFDs, uh, charity causes, whatever, if you're trying to raise funds and you're tired of dealing with like pizzas or hoagies that are frozen or trying to sell wrapping paper, give the gift a lot of flavor. Hunt Chef Fundraising coming to you. The link will be up on the website um, within the next week, so check it out. But this is where um, you can make a big difference for this small team, your team, and make ensure that your uh, your folks that are sponsoring your event for your fundraiser are going to be very happy with their purpose. Bunch of wild flavor seasoning fundraising coming to you soon. Okay. I have talked a lot, of and it's almost an hour. Yeah. 8.23. So I'm going to get two slices. Uh, fresh pork belly here, courtesy of the Hunt Chef Battle Axe, and I'm going to put them in the skillet over here. Actually, we're going to make these into a little bit more smaller pieces. I've been abusing mine. <laughs> it's not ready to start at the moment, but that's okay. It gets the job done. We're going to sizzle in flavor, and we got some fresh pork belly. Going in the skillet. We're going to cook these up just naked like this. We're going to back that heat down even more, let them go slow, and by the time you get the big piece of brine, um, these are going to be ready to shake some other down dirty on and make it a little snack. You have a special, <clears throat> um, you have a special shout out in comments. A they special shout out in comments? Yeah. yeah. She said, Hi, Chef Crabad. Can you guess who it is? Is it my mom? No. He said it's a lady you're going to go see Thursday. Aww, <laughs> Becky. <laughs> Becky. I'll be sure to treat your taste taste dear extra special. <laughs> Alright, so Brian get all mixed up. So these bellies, you don't have to do this, but one of the things I recommend I've shown you guys a million times that your card, that uh, hand tenderizer, and it's going to help get that brine down in all the way through and shorten up your brine process. You can do both sides. I'm only going to do the top. I'm going to make Lance carry this top back and put it forward. I'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> we might, might have two minutes. Yeah, this one's a little bit thicker. And you can do this with your rear legs, your turkey crust, your goose crust, your beef brisket, your pork loin, the um, hunch up rice kit. Anything you want to make juicy, tender, delicious, that's what this brine does. So we're going to go with just the one side. We might need a bigger tub to split the two. But this is what I want to share with you guys tonight. So if you come to that Pico Out Wood Show this weekend, you're going to get to see. And if you're lucky, Kate, after we 
smoke the uh, real lemon wrap. We're going to cut them into chunks. We're going to put them on a stick. We're going to shake that hunk chip straight out of concentrate and load it on the very own. Put them on the grill. We're talking about meat candy on a stick. I don't think Lance is expecting that. No. You'll be fine. We're going to put up our little pork belly nuts here. Chef, yeah, while you're disappointed here, um, I want to thank my buddy Jimmy for sure for the rants. Jimmy, thanks a million. Couldn't have done without you. Not crazy on the color. We're going to fast tire. We're not going to crazy heat. Um, this is another medium here. So this is obviously helping with tenderized meat, not so the pork belly necessarily needs it. For me, it's more for getting that brine down the throat and shortening our brine soaked time process. Oh, get in there, beautiful. There we go. Two more. Two more. Any other um, fun shout outs or interesting comments? Cody Backer and Sam Hank. He says, good luck, haven't met yet, but I'm a good luck when you're on a burn like you. <laughs> What's up, brother? I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to shaking your hand and having me try some uh, Blackberry Barbecue Raccoon or something tasty like that. So again, head over to that Hunt YouTube channel. Uh, you get a chance to check out all the great work we've been doing there. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. One of the uh, few chances we have to make one of extra cash. Um, but also just to share the wild flavor of gospel and everything we're throwing down and around. That is a big, beautiful pub of what's going to be amazing smoked bacon and pork belly. Oh my gosh, I'm excited already. Maybe I turn the heat down a little bit too low. Coming up a little bit. Oh yeah, it's gonna be great. We're gonna get that little on dirty on there now, and let it start to caramelize and do its sweet, smoky barbecue magic goodness while it's still in the skillet. Just enough salt, just enough sweet, just enough smoke. Mmm, so good. Sweet. We didn't even do a taste test yet. Uh, is it eight twenty nine? Do we have winners? Almost. Almost. Hey, so it's time to do a uh, taste test, and not just of the uh, screech out, who's your daddy IPA on my hand, but uh, now I, I can't mess it up too much because I got to get, we got to get pictures here. Yeah, we're going to make it pretty. So, cracker across the wall that way, beautiful. Probably was steaming not too long ago. I'm gonna do this with the greens sauce. Mmm, mmm. And then just kind of slip it off into the, the uh, pin. Like that. No. Oh. That's so good. That'd be really enough for the rest of the team. Alright, I'm gonna take a small black one. I think that's really good. Um, blacken with that hot sauce. Straight out of the bay in there. Come on, don't break on me. Come on. I want to get some of the ranch on it too. And I mean, you'll never throw it in a long new way or a long new load. So easy, so good. Oh my god. And it's pork belly, fresh, right in the pan, right out of that tub. It's going to be some amazing bacon on a stick here real soon. I mean, that fish is exceptionally good. Wow. Wow. Oh. Here comes the heat with the black and the uh, Durant hot sauce. 